Welcome to Church of the Chair, where sometimes we cosplay as the Kool-Aid Man. Oh, yeah! I'm your host, E, and today, we're doing a suggestion from Discord. Because this is a discussion video, it will be lightly edited, if edited at all, past the intro. But my friend, uh, Nettles, over on Discord, had, had put something in the uh, video topic discussion over there. And I want to try it today, and that is top five random books that you think about a lot. Basically, books that stuck with you that maybe you didn't expect and why they stuck with you at random. Make it books you haven't discussed before. Yeah, let's do it. First up, we have Our Kind of Cruelty by Araminta Hall. Uh, this is a book that came out of nowhere for me. I got it off of a uh, book of the month club when I was still a member and this is the first book that I had read from Araminta Hall I have since read two others um, uh, Imperfect Women and Hidden something uh, I can't remember it was a one about the Titanic and I didn't end up reviewing it because I didn't uh, I didn't finish it. Not that it was bad. It's just it wasn't my thing. Um, I'm not big into historical uh, novels, and that was a little too much on the side of what I don't like. But with this one, this one made me think, and I, it pops up in my head a lot, um, especially when this is going to be tricky to word, uh, especially when put in a position to believe women. And what I mean by that is the book is about a stalker, about someone who doesn't initially come off as a stalker, but it just continuously gets worse and worse. And at some point in time in the story, I was on the stalker's side. And the woman in question, it, it should have been obvious to me right off the bat that that wasn't the case that the 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 man in the situation was a hundred percent in the wrong but I like books that make me think um, even challenge maybe preconceived notions or whatever uh, also how some of us men come across as creepy as hell when we might not even when we might not even see it. It opened my eyes to a lot of things, things that I had thought about before, because um, I, unfortunately, even I have history with this. Uh, this is why I snicker when anyone says not all men. I, I feel like all of us, whether we're willing to admit it or not, has made an ass out of ourselves or has made a creep out of ourselves at some point in time, uh, I was the back rub dude at, at work, and it had nothing to do with uh, sexual, anything sexual in nature. I just liked to comfort people, and I had no idea how I came across, and this was in my late teens, early 20s, I had no idea how I came across to those uh, people, because I would give men and women back rubs when they were having stress, just neck rubs, not back rubs, not full-blown back rubs. But I would like rub their shoulders while they were down when they were having a especially, you know, rough night at the hospital. And it wasn't until one of my coworkers brought to my attention that it bothered and upset some people that I had to reevaluate everything that I had thought before. And this is a book that did the same thing to me where I had to reevaluate how I came off and how I would react in a situation where I saw someone treating someone like the man in this book treats the main character. The next book is Gun Love, I think by uh, Jennifer Clement. Uh, I haven't read anything else by this author. I'm not sure if she has anything else out or not, but this was a wild, uh, a wild ride. Nothing supernatural, nothing surreal, but it is just a very small story told in a trailer park. The main character is a little girl. There's a swampiness around. Uh, it's, I believe it happens in Florida. And Gun Love, the title, you can imagine what it's, it's about. It's literally about what's in the title. Um, and I think about this book a lot. I do not remember a whole lot of the premise, but I do remember the dialogue being amazing. And I remember the, that, what is it, alligators? I always get alligators and crocodiles confused, and I know not both of them are in, you know, the U.S. I believe we have alligators. We don't have crocodiles. But uh, it's, 
the either it's an alligator farm or something along those lines i remember that key plot and for some odd reason that section of the book is always on my mind not always on my mind you get what i'm saying i think about it a lot and it pops up at random times whether i'm watching something alligator related or not uh it'll just pop up i think the last thing that i watched was uh is a Swiss army man, I believe it was, and this popped up. I have no idea why. Uh, but if you haven't read this one, I suggest giving it a try. It's one of the, my lesser known favorites. Uh, it's something that I got from Crown Publishing when they were still doing blogging for books. And this one really stuck with me, very short, and it, it holds part inspiration for my uh, novel South of Here. Uh, that and another uh, a documentary called Pervert Park. These two things combined is why South of Here exists. The next one I have is I, I'm a I'm a big fan of the Beowulf uh, poem, uh, and since this has come out, this same author has retranslated it. Although I do not own it uh, yet, I've been looking for it. But it's the Mere Wife by Maria Davana Headley. If I got any of those wrong, I apologize. But this is a fantastic retelling of the the Beowulf mythos, and there's one scene in particular with a train, I believe it is, or it's a monorail or something along that, where you just, I believe it's just going through a, a woods or mountains or whatever, but it painted such a unique picture in my head that whether or not my memory is accurate to the book, that's what I remember the most about this book, is a train weaving through trees and mountain regions and all that stuff. Uh, also, the artwork is something I come back to over and over again. I just absolutely love love the way it looks. I love the color selection. Orange is my favorite color, if you didn't know. Um, <clears throat> I have yet to read anything else from Headley, so it's kind of like gun love in, in that aspect, uh, where I didn't go and seek out anything else by the author, but I do hold this one uh, <clears throat> near and dear. Of course, in the video where I'm trying not to edit all the time, I keep having to clear my throat. So my apologies to those of you out there that didn't sign up for throat clearing ASMR. Next up, we have In the Miso Soup by Ryu Murakami and not Haruki Murakami. Uh, two different authors, obviously. Uh, this book is... It's on my list for most disturbing scenes ever written, and unfortunately... The scene that I find the most disturbing is the scene that sticks in my head the most. Uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you, uh, but if you've read the book, or if you do read the book, look for the section with the ear. Um, I will add a little bit more to that and say that there is an ear that is cut off. It is where the ear is put after being cut off, makes this, puts this, cements it in my top five most disturbing uh, uh, things ever written mainly because I've never seen anything like it and also how traumatizing something of that nature would be uh, so yeah this one pops up quite a bit in my head and the only way I can get things like this out of my head is to write my own story with a scene like that uh, but I, I don't want to do it because it bothered me so much and I don't want to do that to anyone else which is hilarious if you know my work I do have some lines I will not cross. I do. They exist. And what happens in this book is one of them. Uh, lastly is a book. Uh, this is the second book I read from this author. Both of them I got from Crown Publishing's Blogging for Books. Uh, the first one was called uh, The Fold, which was an amazing sci-fi adventure. Uh, kind of, like, I believe, is like... A, time travel in the fold would be the the time travel there's a bunch of plot holes in it but i still had a lot of fun with it uh you can look up uh reviews online to see what i'm talking about or if you've read it maybe you understand there's a bunch of inconsistencies as you get with most time travel books but it was one of the first books that i read after i started subscribing to the idea let fiction be fiction and i absolutely had a blast with the book that's not the one we're talking about though we're talking about the book after that one it's not a series but this is the one he released after that peter klein's paradox bound uh this was absolutely amazing it's another time travel thing 
but the main the the time traveling person honestly reminds me of Doctor Who and while I love Doctor Who and I love the at the the novelizations of some of the episodes and some of the original uh, novels in that series this is the best Doctor Who book ever written and it doesn't even have Doctor Who in it it's about a guy that travel travels through time in the same car and I just remember how cool it was there's a there's a person who is following on his tracks I remember how cool it was the first time they got to ride together and that scene really sticks out for me in this book um, there's a later scene also but I can't even really describe it without uh, without spoilers because it's in the meat and potatoes of the, the whole thing and it's uh, it's a plot twist but that's another those two things pop up in my head all the time especially when I watch like tra time travel movies or I read a book uh, that's time travel related sometimes I'll think about this one when I'm not thinking about anything having to do with time travel. Um, also, if you haven't read Peter Klein's and you just want a really fun book, I highly recommend anything he's done. Um, I have not read his series. He has a series, and I'm slipping my mind what it's called. Let me look it up. I have not read it. <clears throat> Let me flip and flip through here. Oh, it's the X series, EX. It's got X Heroes, X Patriots, X Communication, X Purgatory, X Isle. He also has one. Pardon me if I get this wrong, but Sherlock Holmes versus the werewolf or something. He has something along those lines that is a, uh, a repurposing of something in the public domain. It's something like that. But yeah, hella fun. I haven't read anything from him in years. I really do need to look him up. But yeah, uh, Paradox Bound. So those, Nettles, there's your five. Um, <clears throat> I don't... I don't know what to ask you guys at the end of this one. Uh, I guess just the same thing that I asked myself when I started this, which is, are there any books that just pop randomly into your head that you don't talk about often? And that's what I took from Nettle's post is uh, something that I do not... Well, she said stuff you haven't talked about before. Um, and it was very easy to pick these books because I was just looking around. I'm like, oh, yeah, that one, that one, that one. And I could have done a hell of a lot more than five. But... I wanted to follow what she said. If you guys want a part two to this video, definitely let me know down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, also, let me know if there's any books that just randomly pop at, into your head at any given time, any given day. Uh, something that you enjoyed, even maybe something you didn't enjoy. Let me know all that down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I'll hail the chair.